So hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you're going to join me on the banks of the River Ribble and we're going to be using that whip for some quality roach. But before we do get into that session, I just wanted to take a second just to say Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you and your families are well. You have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've just picked up the two little ones from school. So what do you say? Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So as you can see, the rain is coming down. And again, thank you for all the support you show. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and I hope you enjoy this week's video. Hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Ribble again and we're going to be fishing the whip for silvers. Looking at conditions today, it's a beautiful overcast morning. You can see there's a bit of a ripple on the river. A few fish topping which is always a good sign. And they've given conditions today, the weatherman has said it's not going to rain. They've said 0% chance. So we'll put that to the test today because every time we've been up here recently we've gone home soaking wet through. The river is quite low, you can see really clear river we've got today. We're going to be fishing the whip, my 8 metre whip from Preston. You can see on screen now it's a lovely bit of kit and I say it's an 8 metre whip with the flick tip. The setup we're going to be using is a 3 gram bolo down to a bulk shot including an olivet. I've strung the shot out there to prevent tangles so it helps to stop the hook link tangling and that's down to a size 18 hook. Looking at the side tray, got plenty of maggots with us today and good quality. There have been people asking where I get the maggots from and it's with this angling centre. Last week's bait decided to turn some casters and I'm going to be recording that video over Christmas. Got a couple of days leave so I'll be recording that video and like you can see there not too bad and in this one we've got a couple of pints of hinders hemp and the other bait that I have mixed up is some bread and that's the polycrum now lovely aniseed smelling that I'm going to hold off on putting that in at the start it's going to feed the hemp and the caster and we'll see now looking at the swim we are going to be fishing the whip you can see sat here I'm going to be feeding my casters round about here in front of me or just slightly upstream I've got a good marker in that tree so I'm going to be feeding me hemp about here and then just running that float over the top and that's going to be the plan and say beautiful conditions there's a few people on the bank got my uncle upstream lads on the other bank and yeah hopefully we can get one or two fish so as you can see there's one or two fish topping and during the dark I just fed a bit of hemp into the swim now I'm just going starting off at kind of a right angle to the whip and for these early stages just going to concentrate on just going over the same line and that's a PB leaf to start the session you can see there's quite a few fish topping you know around the area and like I always say on the channel, it's just about these early stages about trying to attract, you know, them fish into your swim. So I'm feeding straight out in front of the caster. You know, they're a heavy bait. The swim isn't that deep. So I know my bait's definitely going to be on the bottom. I've got that tree in front of me there. It's kind of like a marker for me hemp. And I'm just going to slowly work that bolo float just over the top of it I really enjoyed the session last week you know fishing the whip on the river and that is why this week we've come back out 
and I've set up it on it again. This is the swim I was talking about the week before that we walked past. It is a method that you can be positive with. So I am feeding that hemp not too far down the swim. You know, that float is settled by the time it's getting there. And like you see there, that hemp's just gonna be falling with them casters. And feeding near enough in front of me just because you don't want them fish to come up you know above where you, you're feeding you want that bait on the bottom and going through there we go you can see there where we've had the bite is you know a bit downstream you can begin to learn as the session goes on just where them fish are holding but that's a cracking roach to start the session and as you begin to get the bites, then you can think about the bread and try to draw them up a bit. But what was that, the third shot through, and we've had a nice roach. It's a good start. A handful of roach, just coming a nice distance down the swim, and good to get an early bite. So a nice early bite there, and the key with this is you've got to keep that food going in, that line of bait going down the river, you know, you can see there, just coming where that hemp's settling. That's a dace. So the key with it now is obviously to get into a bit of a routine, you know, feeding the caster and just running that float over the top. And good to get early bites. It's always confidence boosting when you can get a few early bites. And what you're hoping to do is to get the fish in the same part of the swim all the time. You can see there them fish are coming where you'd imagine them bait to be landing. Definitely quality with it. It's another nice roach. So as you could see there, the fish are just that nice distance down the swim. You know, if you imagine how deep the swim is, you're putting your bait there, falling, 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 your hemp's heavy, and they're all coming into line in the shadow of that house. And we can keep them there, and with the average size we've been getting, we'll have a really good day. There we go. You see there, just right where you'd expect to get the bites. Now, the biggest worry today, I think, is, is pike. The water's clear. We've obviously got one or two good average stampers fish in the area. And, yeah. The problem when it's clear, the pike can see the fish. And they can be a problem. That would be my only concern right now because obviously you've got nowhere else to go with the whip you can only come closer in or so far out you know you're relying on them fish staying but there is one or two in the area we're getting regular bites to begin with just feeding them casters being a bit easier with the hemp obviously just feeling my way into the swim because i did put a few pouches in at the start There we go. Just as that float has settled as it shallows up. And it's most definitely the best one of the session so far. It's headed right down. Let's feel a quality fish. Looks a nice roach. Ease him away from that sunken tree on the inside. That's a cracking roach that. Makes all the effort in the morning worthwhile. And there we go. Just popped him on the scales just to get an idea and he's just going just over the pound. And it's a lovely roach on the whip. But this type of fishing on the whip, you know, where you've got to think about it, you've constantly got to be thinking about where you're feeding and your presentation is a real challenge and one that I'm enjoying. You see there, it's that little hold back down the swim there. He's just bringing the bite. There's definitely one or two of these roach in the swim today. Absolutely beautiful. And on the ribble they do always have that 
that colour to the gills, which is really nice. But a great start to the session, that nice roach and getting plenty of bites. And of course on the channel you do see me have some bad days and some very good days and today definitely started off like a, a very good day these are the days where if mr pike does turn up you are absolutely gutted so hopefully we can make that cast the last and continue to keep the stamp of the fish high the quality has been good at the start let's get it straight back And that is why I do love bringing hemp to the river. You can see these fish are just coming, you know, over that hemp and where them casters are both meeting the bottom. But that hemp is a bait that I have ultimate confidence in. That's why I always come a river with it because it just holds fish in an area. A sign that there's one or two fish there is when you grab your catapult to put some hemp in <laughs> and you strike with your knees to strike the fish because the float's already gone you definitely want to two of these roach in the swim today most definitely so feeding wise put in a big pouch of that hemp in probably every two or three casts you know having a two pouches one a bit past the line and then one right on it like that that's probably gone a bit further down than what I would normally feed and then every cast through I'm feeding with that caster you know just to keep that bait going through the swim you see there hopefully you can keep them coming from a YouTube point of view these videos can be quite hard to make really because now it's just a case of just keeping doing what you're doing feeding enough to keep them there and keep putting the bait in and running it down and hoping that you can keep the bites coming so you know from making a video point of view it is quite repetitive but in my day-to-day -day job I do do a lot of stats work and quite methodical in the job that I do and when you're doing this type of fishing it definitely helps to be of that mindset you know keeping that float going down the same line keeping the bait going down the same line and being repetitive and consistent it does help i've got to say so with this type of fishing it can never last like a bite of chuck like that all day and for the last half an hour it has been a bit iffy I did think maybe one or two perch or Mr. Pike could come in. But that's just normal when you're doing this type of fishing. Some days, obviously, you do get them all day. They're very, very rare, them days. But most of the time, you get a few, and then they back out, and then they come back in. And it has just been a bit quieter for this last half an hour. And you can definitely tell when that shoal's back. You know, gone back down the next cast. And there's a roach there. I'm going to start doing, I think I'm going to feed a ball of that bread, I think. I think it'll help me hold them in the swim and keep them there as well. Keep putting the hemp in and the caster. But I'm just going to feed one of those balls of bread. So feeding that ball of bread just getting these roach coming straight away over the top of it and when you are going to start making a change obviously 
only change one thing. So today we just put a bit of bread in there and gone over the top of it just to see how it does. And then you can see what difference it makes. You know, if you start changing your depth and then changing the bread and putting bread in, you never really know what's worked. So just make one change and then see how it impacts it. And definitely putting that bread in has brought the fish back into that area we had them at the start. An example there of the dangerous life that roach lead. You can see there where the pike's obviously grabbed it on the back. But an excellent stamp we're getting. Still putting them casters in and trying to be a bit sparse with them to keep them going. And just steady fishing. Picking up bites just over that bread and the hemp with them casters going through. And look at that. Looks like a brand new fish. Got a mark on it and one of the lucky ones because to my right my uncle has most definitely into a pike and when these fish are on it most definitely you can tell you go down and they're just right on top of that hemp and where that bread is i so there are times where they do disappear and i do think it is like my uncle's just had a pike on and I do think it is down to that but when they're in the swim it's just a joy to catch them so we're just coming up to one o'clock now and it really has been amazing fishing you know for this time of year there's nearly an old roach net of fish and just an idea of how much we fed you see there we've nearly used all the casters fed quite a bit of hemp um quite a bit of the bread as well but to this point it really has been good fun So with the sun just coming over the trees over there we're into the afternoon now and the fishing has just been amazing they've had loads of bites and that whip has well and truly had a good day's fishing on it a lovely fish i'm going to enjoy the last hour and a half of the session and i'll catch us all at the end so what an enjoyable session that was on the bank one of them days that comes along very rarely where you go straight in and catch quality roach and that did continue through the day. There was parts of the day where they disappeared, which I think was Mr. Pike. But as you can see on screen now, what a net of fish. Easily my biggest net of roach from the river and on the whip. On the final note, you guys are obviously going to be asking about what do I think about the whip and what an investment it's been. It's a piece of kit that I've used a lot of whip on still waters and slow moving rivers, but not really on a bigger one like the Ribble. And I've been impressed by it. It's been really light, you know, I've held it all day today on that session and I've been impressed by just how many fish it can swing in. You know, 8 ounce roach, 10 ounce roach, been no problem at all swinging them to hand. And it is definitely going to be in the hold all now, every time I go to the river. When you get that feeding right and then fish are just downstream of you, there's no quicker way to catch fish. That does bring the vlog to an end there now. 
again Merry Christmas to you all if you have enjoyed the video please subscribe and like the video and I'll catch you all next week tight lines